I can feel a great deal of energy in the room today and I think we all know that uh, we are in, we are under attack at the moment from our, um, our own government. How many people would know that Papua New Guinea has had a super profits tax? What happened to that super profits tax? <laughs> it was introduced 35 years ago by a promising uh, young chap called Ross Garno, who was the uh, Minister for Finance in Papua New Guinea, and he introduced the super profits tax. It was finally thrown out in 2003 after five years of lobbying by the industry. In the 28 years that it was enforced, through the development of creative accounting and through the failure of the triggers in that, in that legislation to ever trigger, it raised a grand total of zero dollars in 28 years. So, why was it thrown out? Didn't make any difference. It was thrown out because potential investors hated it. Every time anyone went to Papua New Guinea, they spent hours trying to understand when it kicked in, how it kicked in, and why, it, why, it, why and when it might apply to them when operations such as Porgera, one of the richest gold mines in Papua New Guinea's history, had escaped it. I hear around the newspapers and places that various elements of our industry are discussing with the government a tax that would super profits tax that would apply specifically to companies in our industry. Why the discrimination? By picking off individual companies and those who are eager to meet the new Prime Minister, we're dropping one important point which is that this is a discriminatory tax against miners alone. This boom took 23 years to build. The first 13 of those years were an absolute nuclear winter of development and absence of capital that we will all remember very well. So after 23 years, we get a few good years in a row and we get chosen above all other industries and those industries profited through those 13 years by and large. People do not understand and certainly people in Canberra do not understand that the amount of embroidery and needlework and investment and careful building that has gone into this boom, they all just sort of see it as a waterfall that they can come and stand under, a cash waterfall. Now the represented, one point for us all to just reinforce at this moment is that our representation when those advertisements, we also saw those wonderful advertisements where one sentence was finished around Australia by different contractors and people working who depended on the mining industry right across the country. When those advertisements were pulled, they were pulled without the consent of the people in them. We are not represented by the Minerals Council of Australia. It represents about 18 odd boards of major companies who it reports to. The Western Australian Association of Mining and Exploration Companies also represents almost purely management, although a little, uh, a, a wider base of, of smaller, strong and vocal companies, uh, it, it, it does not represent the views of people. We, by and large, are not represented in these discussions at the moment. The people, the professionals, the contractors, the entrepreneurs, are not represented in these discussions. There is no need to have this tax. And there is no need for it to be discriminatory against mining when, if it's only for super profits, why can't everyone have it? The 23 years it took us to build this cycle, we were, in, were enjoyed by the population of Australia through the global financial crisis. Our industry, our industry, nearly alone, stood and defended the country against the global financial crisis. And what a Vietnam homecoming we got. Not only was the credit for that stolen from us by uh, Wayne Swan and the fellow he used to work for, 
but we were, the credit was taken from us and then a tax was imposed on us. I would urge any of you who have any influence with the leaders of the Australian mining industry anywhere to encourage them to not negotiate anything with this government until after the election. If they can take one small victory with one company and to the election to show that they've achieved more than Rudd could, it will be used against us. I would urge you all to oppose this tax in every form and to be resolute together. We are the large number of the Australian mining industry and we are perfectly positioned to oppose it. I make those comments. Thank you. Thank you.